All right, we're live. <sighs> All right, Percy. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's June the Grimmer here, and I'm back at one of my favorite places mm, with one of my favorite dogs to groom. This is Percy. Percy is a, he's a bit of a rascal. <laughs> um, just earlier, I mean, he kind of scratched up his mom. He just, he's kind of a Jekyll and Hyde. Uh, on the table, look, he looks perfectly fine, you know, but he just, he turns into like a Hyde, Mr. Hyde, you know, Dr. Jekyll. Mr. Anyways, um, he's all matted. Right, see, if we bring this in close, you can actually see like the impacted hair, you know, see how it's pelted, see those? It kind of feels hard to the touch. And those are close to the skin. And so this is, hey, what's up, Steel Texas gal? <laughs> So this is basically what happens around this time of year, right? Every time there's a change of season, it's gonna happen again later in the fall when it's starting to turn from fall to winter. Hey, what's up, Daisy, like the flower? And then again, it's gonna happen in the heart of winter, you know, like right around um, December 21st, they say, like the darkest time of the year. And then it happens again from when it starts, when spring starts to come. And then it happens again when summer happens, you know? so. Um, and the reason for that is every season they're growing new hair and in order for the new hair to come in This old hair has to come out so it detaches from the root inside the skin and then because of the hairs Because the hairs are no longer attached to the root. They no longer have sub substance. They don't have like, like life to it So they, they just get fray they fray they get they get fuzzy Like velcro and so then they start to tangle up together They start to attract and start to fall up and then the live hairs start to get caught, caught up in that. So it can get out of hand pretty quickly, um, especially when they have long hair like this. So look at this. This is all matted hair right here. See that? It's all just big balls of mats. Let me, oh, let me bring it in closer. See that? It's all just matted hair, big balls. So um, the, there's a few options. It's gonna take hours because because they're dogs, because they're alive, and they, and they have se it's sensitive skin, and it's gonna hurt. Um, hey, Skyart, what's up? Rachel, anyways, because it, it takes time, um, I don't judge groomers who just shave them from not, you know, I used to, I used to be like, oh, look at those lazy groomers, they don't wanna take the time. That's not it at all. It takes me about four hours to get this all combed out. Four to five hours. Um, it took me six on one dog. Um, just just a few days ago um, Well, I'm a groomer and I'm going to be honest. I wouldn't deem at that exactly and I don't blame you I honestly don't blame you um, And I'm not asking anybody to do what I do <laughs> um, I know it's crazy <clears throat> My daughter even the other day sky we normally would shave that because it would hurt them too much exactly um, And it would take so long. How do you charge on dogs like that? so I have just accepted that this is gonna happen <laughs> This hair a few times a year and so you know I just accept that you know this is this is what I do right and I, I want to save the coat um, not only because and I'll explain it as I'm going through why I'm doing it and more this is for dog owners this is not for pet groomers um, especially if, if you're a professional pet groomer this is how you make a living because you know, I didn't even charge the, the client for the bath or the haircut because again, I don't charge my time I charge my services because time is precious. It's priceless. I don't want to put a, a number on my time So I didn't charge them for the bath or the haircut just the brush out and that's only $50 that we charge for a brush out so six hours <laughs> I was just exhausted so anyways, I take my daughters to um, you know, Mall of Georgia in the play area and also, you know, get them some snacks and while we were um, sitting down and just enjoying some snack time, my older daughter, Ava, she was like, you know, why do, why do you do, why do you spend such a long time, you know, just for a little money? And I told Ava, it, because it's not about the money. And I was like, if I was doing this for the money, I would actually pay that lady $50 so I wouldn't have to spend all that time, you know, and I could come home and spend time with my daughters. And, oh, can't wait to see your heart, thank you. So, and I was to explain to Ava, if it was for the $50, then of course I wouldn't have done it. I, I would have actually paid $50 to get out of it, right? It would have been totally worth it for me. 
it wasn't the $50 I did it for. It was because the dog was in pain and uncomfortable and I wanted to do what I can do to help that family and give them what they wanted, give them some hope, right? And I was like, because that's why I'm doing what I'm doing, it still felt worthwhile to me, you know? And I was like, oh, and I'm reading this book, um, The Best Advice I Ever Got by Katie Couric. Alicia Keys, and my, my daughter's love, what little girl doesn't like Alicia Keys, right? <laughs> so anyways, Alicia Keys, um, she said that th she always asks herself the question, right? She calls it the question. And the question is, if I never made another dime from this, would I continue doing what I'm doing? And my answer is yes. You know, I love doing this. I love the results. I, I don't love the work. I'll be honest, it sucks. But you have to embrace that. You have to embrace the suck, you know? And I feel honored that I'm the one that they trust to do this, right? And then the finished results, when you see the dogs so fluffy and comfortable and they're taking a nap and they appreciate you, the family appreciates you. When I drive home, I feel amazing. Had nothing to do with the $50. And I, I told Ava, so here's the question for you, Ava. You know, my da older daughter wants to be a painter, not art, an artist. And I told her, if, you, if you're thinking about becoming a painter because you're thinking that, you know, you'll make really nice paintings and you'll sell, sell them and you'll make money, I was like, then that's probably not uh, a good idea. You know, I was like, oh. <laughs> my wife just, um, I was telling her, if you're doing it because you think that that's a, that's a fun way to make money, then I wouldn't suggest doing it. I was like, but if you, if you can accept the fact that you may never sell a painting and you may never make any money off of it, but you still have this inner deep desire to express yourself through painting, then I believe you should be a painter. And we went around and looked at a few paintings and Ava told me, she was like, Dad, I don't think I care about making the money or if they sell. She's like, I just want to paint. And I was like, then you're a painter, you're an artist, you know? Anyways, okay, so let's get started. So I usually would comb, <coughs> comb and brush the coat while it's dry like this because it, it helps get the dead hairs out easier. However, when, now that it's matted like this, solid mats, right? $50, that's it, LLJ. <laughs> it's not about the money. I'm sure these dogs really, thank you, LLJ. <laughs> and, and that's the thing, it's like, I think, I think uh, it's easy to say, oh, I don't do this for the money. I love what I do, I wanna help. But when you get put in those situations where it really tests that, you know, then I think, you know, we have these opportunities to really prove that we're willing to walk the walk, not just talk the talk, you know? Anyways, so I'm using Bark Logic Leave-In Calming Conditioning Spray. So these have oils, and it's gonna help the hair slip a little bit better, right? So, I'm gonna go in with this matte splitter here, and you hold it at the base, and it's in and out. In and then out, see that? Let me see if I can get this closer. So again, this is not a tutorial for professional pet groomers. This is more informational um, demonstration for pet owners at home. If you want to save your dog's coat, and you absolutely do not want your groomer to shave it, this is how you're going to do it, okay? So we go in, we want to get under the mats, pull the skin tight, get under that mat, see that? And then just work it, just in and out. This up and down action here. I'll come on this side here so you can see a little better. See that? So we're going in and out, in and out. And we don't want to pull too hard on the skin, you know, because it's already feeling uncomfortable. Because not only are these mats pulling on the skin, but there's a lot going on inside that those pores that are actually causing these mats. Um, I remember reading somewhere that we really should look at the dog's hair as an extension of their skin. So anytime you see something fun funny going on with their uh, coat, then it's usually a safe bet to say that there's probably something funny going on underneath that hair at the skin level. Because the hair is really an extension of their skin. And so we shouldn't really look at the skin and the coat as two separate um, entities. We really want to look at them as um, one in the same. It's skin coat, 
<laughs> you know, like skin coat rather than skin and coat, you know, it's, it's all working together as one system. So, good boy, Percy. Alrighty. Oh, so Katie Couric, actually, <clears throat> um, there's a quote in that book from Katie Couric I'd like to share. She said, if you focus only on financial success, then you'll usually end up with a big bank account and a barren soul. I've, let me repeat that because I think it's so powerful. If you only focus on the money, she said, don't make money your mantra. Because if you only focus on financial success, usually you'll end up with a big bank account and an empty soul. So I like what she said there, because what we focus on, it, you know, where your focus goes, energy flows. So if all you're focusing on is financial success, what she's saying is that you'll probably get it. And I really like that. You know, you will probably get it. You'll get a huge bank account. But at what cost, though? You know, at what do you have to sacrifice? You know, how many relationships do you have to sacrifice? You know, how many, how many times do you have to sacrifice even things that you want to do, your personal time and your personal, you know, just your personal time that you want to, you know, that you want to spend for yourself? You know, we sacrifice all of these things, everything that makes life worthwhile. Sometimes we ignore all of those and sacrifice those in the effort to get that financial success that we think that we want, that we think will make us happy. And the more and more um, people that I learn about and talk to, especially the ones who have made a lot of money, they all say the same thing, is that Jim Carrey said it best. He wishes that everybody would get the fame and riches and the success that they want so that they can realize that that's not where it's at. All righty. But yeah, I mean, having, having a, a bigger picture, having a greater purpose than just money really does um, give more meaning to life and what you're doing. Oh, sorry about that. What was that? Uh, so yeah. Can you replace blade when it's dull? Yes, you can. You actually can buy it and see it unscrews there and you can replace these blades. It comes out. Uh, professional sharpeners can sharpen them. Yeah, or you could just buy a replacement blade. Um, they, I used to get these at Pet Edge, but I think Pet Edge is out of business, so I'd have to go, you know, kind of look for them now. Um, I love that quote, super powerful and true, exactly. And I love that she, she acknowledges that if you make financial success your goal, you will probably achieve it. I really like that. So, you know, because sometimes when I was super broke <clears throat> and they repoed my car and we had, we were just going through a lot of debt and we were going through a lot of problems, I remember you know, whenever we would drive around, I would, everything looked so delicious. Everything looked so good. Burger King looked amazing. You know, don't even talk about Outback or Applebee's. You know, everything just looked so amazing. And I was oh, like, I just wanted to eat at all these places, you know, when I had no money to do it. Now, um, we can go out and eat pretty much at any of those restaurants, you know, at any day of the week. It really doesn't matter now. But I just, I don't feel, I don't feel that same hunger for it. I don't really have any cravings for it. It's just, it's weird. I guess um, when we think we can't have something, it seems more desirable to us. But then once we, once it's available to us, you know, it kind of loses its, uh, its allure, right? Same thing with, I think, becoming financially successful. When you feel like it's, with, it's, it's out of your reach, it's an impossibility. When you feel like you'll never have financial freedom, then it's easy to, you know, really desire that because you think that you can't have it. But I like how Katie Couric reassures you, yeah, you can. You will probably become very rich, but you'll have a barren soul, you know? And I'm not saying that everybody who makes a lot of money <laughs> has a barren soul. That's not what I'm saying. It's just that when you make money, your only focus. Oh, okay, so... Um, Jordan Peterson wrote this book called uh, 12, yeah, 12 Steps to a, a Life, 12, 12 Rules for Living or something like that. <clears throat> so Jordan Peterson in that book, um, I think on rule number nine, he was talking about how our aims determine what we see. 
And he used the example of the gorilla. You guys probably saw this video on YouTube, but these people are, you know, passing a ball back and forth. And the instructions are to count how many times the ball gets passed back and forth. And everybody usually gets it right, right? It's like 15 or something like that. But what nobody notices the gorilla in the middle of the screen, right? And, then, and plain as day. And I, I actually missed it too when I saw that video. And when I replayed it, the gorilla literally stops in the middle of the screen and does this, right? And it's like, how did I miss that? It's right in the middle of the screen. It's because we were focusing on how many times the ball getting passed back and forth. We didn't even see what was right in front of us. So I really like that because whatever you make your goal, whatever you focus on and make your, you know, your main goal and that's all you focus on, then that's, that determines the things that you see. There might be other opportunities right in front of your face that you'll miss, you know, um, birthday parties, soccer games, things that are important to your children and other people that are important to your life, weddings, you know. Um, you know, I'm just keep throwing out examples, but I'm just saying there's a lot of other things in life that make life so meaningful that you might miss just because, you know, we're, lo we're, we're looking at the wrong thing. We're focusing on the money rather than the experiences, you know? All right, so <clears throat> once you've broken this up enough, see, it's not really broken up that much now. You just got to keep going through. It's like raking leaves. It would be awesome if I could go out to my lawn with the rake when all the leaves are there, or even after I mow the lawn, raking up those de the dead grass, the cut, the cut grass, is probably the hardest part of mowing the lawn, you know? And it would be so awesome if everything just came right up with one, you know, every time I would go through with the rake. But it, unfortunately, that's just not how nature works. <laughs> so you have to keep going through you have to keep swiping you know <laughs> okay until you get to a point where see what we're trying to do is we're trying to break up this network of mats there we go that way it's not all just one completely solid like connected mat it, now we've broken it up to where it's a lot of small mats now a lot of smaller mats see that and we can even spray a little bit more. <clears throat> so now that we've gotten it broken up so that it's not just one big solid mat, see, now these can actually slide out. Look at that, right? So that's when we get the next tool, this rake here. See, and I've cleaned it already. You always wanna take time to clean your tools. Okay, so then we're gonna go through like this. See that? And the dog will usually let you know how much they're willing to tolerate. Every dog has a different level of tolerance for pain. So you have to just listen to the dog and, and go with what they're telling you with their body language. Okay. Uh, Mel Melody says, it's frustrating because the people want their dogs brushed out, don't learn to brush their dogs, and they come in like that every year. Several times a year, about four times a year, right? <laughs> and that's why I'm making these videos. This is not to try to change how groomers are grooming. I understand why you're shaving the dog's coat out because how can you earn enough to cover your expenses and your overhead and stay in business and pay your employees and pay your taxes? You can't do all that if you're not charging at least $30 an hour, right? At, at a minimum. So um, the six hour brush out would have to cost 180 bucks. And then the bath and, and the groom on top of that, which is probably another 100 bucks. So. It's, it's really difficult to find people who are willing to pay 280, 300 bucks for a dog room, yet they still want you to magically save the coat. So I think by sharing this information and showing people how long it takes and the work it takes, maybe um, we can solve the problem, you know, at, at its root cause, you know? And that way, when owners do come in with a dog like this, they, they will tell you, you know what, I understand you can go ahead and shave it, you know? Or they'll spend six, seven hours, probably more like eight or eight to 10 hours because, you know, the first time you do this is not gonna happen so easily. I'm used to doing this and so that's why <laughs> I've got it down to six hours. But anyways, yeah, um, 
and then they're gonna appreciate the grimoire a lot more. You know, I think. So, see, so we're just working section by section. Once we get this area all clear, then I'll move on to the next leg. And it's usually the legs and the shoulders. Like here is not gonna be so bad. It is a little bit, but it's not as difficult as the legs, the, the haunches here, you know, <laughs> and the shoulders. Because um, those are the areas that what we call high friction areas. They, they rub against each other more. You know, they rub against other things more. So, look at that. See that? So we're getting all of these dead hair out. And that's really what it is. Once you get the dead hair out, the live hairs won't tangle up like that. Okay, let me move this back a little. Alrighty. Perfect. And this actually gets me excited <laughs> when I see progress, you know, and I'm like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, you know, it actually feels really good. There you go, buddy. Good job, Percy. Okay, okay. And any, anytime they actually let out like a vocal Anytime they protest like, vocally, they let out a yelp or a bark or, eh, you know, whatever, I will put down the tool and I'll say, I'm sorry, you know, because I feel like, you know, as long as we honor the way they're feeling, we, re we show them that we're, we respect their feelings. I think that goes such a long way and the dog is much more willing to cooperate as long as they see that you're, you're aware of how they're feeling, you know, and you're acknowledging how they're feeling. I know, buddy, I know. See, so every time I feel a lot of resistance, I'm just gonna pull it back out. See that? So you don't wanna continue to yank away at it. You know, just go in, and when you feel the resistance, you just kinda pull it out. There you go, see that? And for some reason, even though, even though I'm not doing it any harder, just pulling it out and going back in, just, it just gets it a lot easier the second time around. I don't know why because it's not like I'm putting any more force behind it. Okay. There we go. So, you know, I want to I want to try to dispel a few myths here. The first one, groomers are lazy. They just shave my dog when I told them not to. Well, this is the reason why. <laughs> so, let me just get rid of that one that myth. Groomers are not lazy. Groomers are probably some of the hardest working most compassionate people I've ever met, you know? And usually they're introverted, and they're usually um, people who have struggled with anxiety and um, self-esteem and things like that. Not all of them, I'm just saying, you know, like as a group, generally, most groomers that I meet and talk to, we share, we share the same character traits, you know? <laughs> we care deeply about what people think about us. We care deeply about how the animals are feeling. And so, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want people to think that groomers are lazy just because they shaved their dogs down. You know, there's a reason behind it. Now, the second myth I wanna dispel, that it's impossible to demat a dog. Obviously it's not because I do it every day. <laughs> I do this every day, even though I don't share it on social media. You know, this is what I'm doing every day pretty much. Um, maybe not spending as long, you know, right now it's taking longer because we're going through a season change. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Percy. Um, but, yeah, so it's not impossible. Um, the third myth that I want to dispel or, you know, disprove is that this is torturous to a dog. Obviously, it's not torturous to a dog, you know. As long as we're, we're able to make it very clear to them why we're doing this, you know, we're trying to help him feel more comfortable so these mats don't keep tugging at his skin and making him feel bad, you know. And we do it in a way where, see that? By our touch, by everything we do, we want to make it very clear to him that we're not trying to scare him or hurt him, we're just trying to help, you know. 
So I think in the way you do it, it, it makes the difference. If we do it in a frustrated way, in an angry way, or resentful way, we resent this work, um, we feel angry at the client, um, you know, we feel upset about how long it's taking. Whenever we're grooming that way with those feelings, they can feel it. They can literally feel it vibrating off of our bodies. We, we vibrate differently. We literally give off a different energy. And dogs are not going to rationalize it. They're not going to say, oh, this person might be having a bad day. Um, they're probably tired. They may not have gotten enough sleep last night. You know, maybe they got in an argument with their wife or their girlfriend or their boyfriend. And, you know, it's not really me that's making them feel this way. You know, dogs are not going to rationalize like that. They're just going to think, this person's angry. I'm scared, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to resent the work. And if you do find yourself resenting the work, then maybe um, just go the route of explaining to your client, you know, gently, nicely what's going on and maybe even show them. Maybe even comb out one or two mats and show them how long it takes and, and you know how much patience it takes on the dog's part and the groomer's part. Then, you know, then maybe um, rather than just throwing it on your client, <laughs> having them pay and then showing them the shaved dog, rather than doing that, just right up front, right when they check the dog in, say, oh, let me show you something. <laughs> and then we can give them an option. You can take your dog home and you can do this and get all the tangles out, bring them back when they're detangled, or um, you, you can have me shave it and we'll start over, you know, and we'll try to take better care of the coat, um, you know, once it, once it grows back, or you can take them somewhere else because those are the only two options I really have, you know, and you can say it in a nice way, but then you avoid the whole misunderstanding where, you know, you shave the dog down because you had them sign a waiver. You know, nobody reads the waivers. And so they don't know what they're signing. And so you, you could even show them, hey, you signed it. It says right here that I'm going to shave the dog that's matted. They're not going to care. They're already upset. And especially some of the salons I used to work at, they used to take the payment first before they showed the dog. And then here comes the shaved dog. And the owner's now upset. They've already paid for it. You know, like, so rather than do all that, I think it's much better just be upfront. Even us, with, uh, with anybody that's a new client, even though they've been on the waiting list for a long time, the very first email will usually be like, you know, this is how much time we require, um, especially on the first visit. It's probably gonna take all day because we gotta get to know your dog. Um, this is our process and this, these are our prices, you know? And so let's just make sure that we are all on the same page and we agree before we move forward. And that right there has, pre has prevented so many problems for me. Because, yeah, um, six to eight hours later, <laughs> if I'm still working on the dog and finishing up the haircut, you know, the, the, the new clients can't be upset with me because I, I already warned them. I already told them up front what was gonna happen. I know, okay, buddy. There you go, good boy, Percy. All right, so this leg is almost all combed out. Look at that. This on the bottom here. Okay, buddy. Good boy, look at this. It's coming out nicely. Okay. So right around the joints, like the ankles, you know, any other joints, for some reason, and I think maybe because the bone is right there and they don't have that much skin underneath of it, you know, right where the joints are, it usually causes them to react much more. See, it's covering the shot. I'm trying to get a good shot of it. Okay. So look at all these. See that? So these are all just dead hair, just tangled up in there. Look at that. Now I can kind of comb it out. All right. Good boy. There you go.
at that. See? So this die here, look at that. Now it feels much softer. Get it close. It looks silky and soft. See that? And look at how the cone goes through now. Look at that. Right? So obviously this leg here is not going to feel as uncomfortable as all of this pulling at his skin right now. It's tight and it's pulling at his skin like that. So now here he has some relief. See that? Oh, thank you, buddy. <laughs> Alrighty. Actually, I should say you're welcome. Maybe he's thanking me, right? <laughs> what can I say? It's okay. You're welcome. For the wonderful groom you get. What can I say? It's okay. You're welcome. <laughs> and thank you. <laughs> Alrighty. Yeah. Uh, just so you know, Maui's, you know, quickly become my favorite character. <laughs> you know, I can relate to Maui so much, you know. I know it's a lot. The hair. The bod. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, let's see. I hate it when, I, okay. The problem, the client will never brush out that dog and you can't really charge what it's truly worth. Yeah, so Connie, my wife actually is watching this and she just uh, suggested to me um, through text message um, that maybe what you can suggest is a maintenance groom and that's what we do. Um, for dogs like this with long hair and we understand that the uh, parents the owners don't want the coat shaved, then we give, we give them another option. Um, you know, you do this at home, or <laughs> you know, uh, you let me shave it, or um, we can do a maintenance groom where I'll comb out your dog thoroughly in between the grooms. So let's say the dog comes in once every six weeks. Then every three weeks, you know, three weeks after the groom, they come in for a brush out service, and you, and you do this and you brush them out. Um, if they come every eight weeks, then you can do break it up to every four weeks. But we don't suggest um, going past eight weeks. So anyone that's goes, that schedules after eight weeks, um, we go ahead and charge the new client price because it's kind of like starting all over because we're not able to build upon the last groom. All the work we did on the last groom after eight weeks, after two months, you know, realistically, all of that work is kind of gone. <laughs> so you have to start over. Um, so we have to charge what we would charge a new client. And so it's, it starts at 160 bucks for a dog this size. So that kind of helps discourage um, people as well. Because then you can say, you know, you can pay a lot more um, and, you know, do it that way. Or you can schedule more regularly and we keep the price manageable. Melly D, even if I wanted to brush out a dog, severely mounted dog, I would not be able to devote six hours in one day to the same dog. Yeah. I feel, that's why I feel so lucky that I get to do this, you know? I wouldn't if I could. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I'm not gonna argue with you, you know? Uh, Skyer, his fur looks so silly, right? Oh, it, it feels so nice. And that's why I wanna, I wanna save that, you know? I wanna save this coat as much as possible for several reasons. Because, um, first of all, as we get this stuff out, it's coming out of the skin, and so it's releasing a lot of the stuff that's trapped in that skin, in those pores, with this hair. So we're clearing out the skin, we're clearing out the pores. Not only that, but the, the oils being produced by the skin use this hair as a way to travel along the body. So if we take, remove the highway, you know, the mode of transportation, then the oil cannot really move along the body as well. So what it'll do is it'll start to pull together, you know, in certain areas because of gravity. So then these areas here, under the, under the legs, under the armpits, you know, those areas will start to get really yucky. Because just like clean water, I mean, moving water stays clean, um, a pool of water gets yucky. So that's another reason. Um, third reason is because the coat actually provides protection from the environment. Um, regulates their temperature, things like that. So uh, the coat is actually <laughs> pretty important. Uh, did he? <laughs> First he turned the camera with his nose. Anyways, so this coat here is actually very important to the skin. Like I said, it's an extension of their skin. So that's why I do it personally and I, I like to. 
and I, I, I feel great that I can spend, and you know, this much time on just one dog, you know? I feel lucky to do that. Okay. You should take pictures and do before and after. Yeah, I, yeah, I used to, but... I think before I was a lot more into the taking pictures and social media and everything because I wanted proof. I wanted proof that I could actually do this because I wasn't really sure if I could do it every time, <laughs> you know? Um, but yeah, now I realize, you know, I just got to roll up my sleeves and do it and I can do it. I can do it every time now. And so, you know, I'm not so big on pictures anymore. Um, I had a client really hurt my feelings because she spent hours brushing their dog out, Golden Doodle, and I was able to get one inch snap on comb through her fur. She still told me I was lazy. I cry. Yeah, I completely get that. And I went on a little bit of a rant on my Facebook page, kind of addressing that. How a lot of times pet owners don't know how much they're hurting our feelings, especially after we spend hours toiling over their dog, you know, and trying to make them feel better. They pick, the, they pick up their dog, and then as soon as they pick them up, they say, oh, I'm, I'm so sorry, that mean person did all those mean things to you. No, oh, they're so bad. And it's like, whoa, what? You know? <laughs> or, you know, they'll call you lazy, even after you spend hours sweating, you know, over their dog. And a lot of times I think it's because pet owners don't really understand what's going on. They don't really get what's, what's happening. So that's why I created this YouTube channel is to try to show pet owners, you know, exactly what's going on and what grooming is about. You don't know how many times people have told me, you just get to play with bubbles and puppies all day long. What are you complaining? You know, it's like, that's not it. It's not all just rainbows and butterflies and puppies. You know, it's, 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 it's this, it's, it's a lot of patience. It's a lot of skill. It's a lot of control, you know, self-control and control over the tools because they're sharp. Control over the dog but not forceful, you know? Uh, Melly D, thank you for educating. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Melly D. And again, I'm, I totally support you. I, I, don't think that, I don't think that you're lazy. And I completely get why you, you would shave a dog like this. And then hopefully, after some people watch this video, they'll understand why you're shaving it as well. And they won't call you lazy, I hope. Because, yeah, we are not lazy. We are, we are no-limit soldiers, really. So much feels. Hugs, Millie. Aw, Rachel, you're so sweet. Seriously. <laughs> hey, where's Ira, by the way? It's usually you and Ira, right? Shoot. <laughs> Dermig Ira. We're, Der, Ira, if you watch this later, I miss you, Ira. <laughs> Okay, so now this leg is good. Look at that. And here's the thing about, about grooming, why I call it honest labor, why I believe that this is some, one of the most honest work you can do, besides being a chef. <clears throat> because a good dish never lies, neither does a good groom. So check this out. No matter how much somebody says, he didn't really take the time and do it, if you get this comb and you go through, you can tell actually, yeah, he did. Look at that, right? But if, it, if I told people, yeah, I, I went through and I worked really hard and I really tried to get all the tangles out, and then they get this wide side of the comb and they try to go through, they're gonna be like, I don't know, right? <laughs> so that's why I feel like grooming is probably one of the most rewarding jobs I've ever had because in every other position that I've held, in every other job, it seemed like I just couldn't catch a break. It just seemed like someone else was better connected. They knew someone else. They came from a better family. You know, they had, you know, whatever. It just, they had these advantages over me that I just felt like I, could, I couldn't, the, I just, I couldn't level the playing field, right? I just felt like I couldn't, I couldn't, you know, get, catch a break, the same breaks that other people did until I found grooming. And then I started to realize, you mean to tell me. <laughs> All I have to do is be willing to do this and just be willing to work hard because that's I can do that, you know? Shoot. Now I found something where it doesn't matter if someone else, um, you know, gets endorsed by another big-time famous groomer or 
you know, they're backed by people in the industry and, you know, they have all the advantages. It really doesn't matter. You know, my clients are still going to hire me. <laughs> there you go, buddy. See, the sides are always easier. Now, when I get to this front leg and shoulder, it's going to be a little tougher. Oh my goodness, she just had a baby. Oh my goodness, Rachel, that's awesome. How did you know that? LLJL. We have to accept that there are selfish, ungrateful people, others, but don't focus on that. Focus on what you love. Exactly. We, can please, we can't please everybody. I'm sure all the doggies are great. LLJL, I love that. Focus on what you do want. The loving people, the caring people, the match. Because again, like Jordan Peterson said, if you're focused on the bad, that's all you see. And even if a giant positive gorilla, a happy gorilla is right in the middle of the screen going like this, you don't even see it, right? It's right in front of our eyes. We don't even see it because we're looking and focusing on the bad. So if you focus on the positive and you think about the people who do care about you and who do value you, right? Then even if a negative gorilla, right? Just a cranky, mean old bully gorilla comes through and says, Rawr, you won't even see it. Even if it's right there in front of the middle of the screen, you won't see it because you're not focused on that. Okay. There we go, see? <clears throat> so basically I'm using this to help it slip, help the hair slip. See that? There we go. See, look at that. So that's what we're cutting out. Okay. See that? You just pull it out. Whenever it catches on something, you just pull it out and go back through. And for some reason, even though I'm not putting any more pressure behind it than the first time, the second or third swipe, for some reason, it just, it goes through. <laughs> so it's not by force, you know, we don't want to, we don't want to force it. We want to tease it, you know, like, hey, you little hair, you looking all cream colored and you tease it, you tease it and you make them feel bad. <laughs> I was kidding. <laughs> I just kidding. That's not the kind of tease I meant, anyways. <laughs> okay. So now I'm getting close to the armpit. So these, these mats here are gonna be a lot tougher because see that? It's a high friction area. It's moving a lot, you know? So down here, these mats are gonna be a little tighter. There we go. And then you could even switch up to this. <laughs> Says, don't bully the mad steward. Hey, I like. Where do you think I get my lunch money? <laughs> Alrighty, I'm just kidding. These mats don't even have pockets. They have nowhere to keep the lunch money. I I don't take their. <laughs> oh, see, he he's kind of using his mouth to let me know. Ah, that's uncomfortable because right here under his armpit. So you just, see that, just tease it. There you go. There we go. Alrighty. So usually I will have like a audio book, like right now I'm listening to Jordan Peterson's 12, 12 Rules for living, or is it 10 rolls for living? Anyways, 10, I have it on my audible. <laughs> but anyways, um, you know, or I listen to something inspirational or I'll turn on classical music, you know, so, cause I'm gonna be here for a while anyways, might as well make the best of the time. But um, his owner here, she is so kind and so nice and 
just nothing seems to bother her really. Even today I was texting her like, hey, I'm really sorry but the dog I'm doing this morning is taking a lot longer because, you know, just the time of year it is. Coat change, you know, I was like, I, I'll try to be there by 1.30, I promise, you know. She, she was like, no big deal, we're here, you know. <laughs> Anyways, um, I got here at 1, a little <laughs> before 1.30. Anyways, she, you know, she's just so, so cool. So I asked her, like, can I stream? You know, do you mind if I stream live? And she's like, no, I don't mind, go ahead, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, a lot of my clients don't really like it. They don't really, you know, I can feel, I can tell it's kind of makes them uncomfortable. Um, so I don't, but you know, the few clients that do like it and they do like let me stream live, you know, I, I love it. I love it. It kind, of, it kind of makes me feel like I'm not, I'm not by myself in this room, you know? <laughs> So, this mat splitter is gonna be really good for these tight mats under these armpits. Look at that. Do you see that? Oh my goodness. Look at this. See? Because this is a, is a knife. See that? It's a straight, it's a razor. I could probably shave if I wanted to with this. So, these are serrated. See that? There's ridges on them. See? So, <clears throat> this one here, it will break it up, but it's not gonna cut through the mats as well as this one will. And so that's why I don't wanna go through the entire dog with this either, because then you're gonna get a bunch of cut lines. So you just wanna break up enough, there we go, to where it's not one solid network of mats, right? Then you can go with this, and this will go ahead and pull a lot of it out without cutting so much. Alright, Skyheart. Wish you could stream more often, and you are never alone. Just look behind you. <laughs> oh, it scared me for a second. <laughs> like, what, what? <laughs> Do you see a ghost or something? Anyways. No, but I, I, I guess you mean the dog. You know, I'm never alone. I'm with the dog. Yeah. But I don't know. The dog doesn't never laughs at my jokes. You know. Maybe I'm just not funny to dogs. Maybe they have a different sense of humor, you know? Right? What if I lick my butt? Would that make you laugh? No. <laughs> if I lick my butt, he'd probably join me, and I don't want that. <laughs> okay. Maybe like seeing a squirrel fall out of a tree, or maybe seeing a cat run into a wall or something, maybe that'll make a dog laugh. Who knows? <laughs> Oh my goodness. So there, there was a Westie named Maggie, all right? She is one of my favorite clients, you know, dogs to grandma. She's so awesome and so sweet. But anyways, um, her song was Sometimes When We Touch. It was, it was amazing because I could sing other songs. I did have sang other songs to her, but none of them ever got the reaction. But when I started singing like, sometimes when we touch, the honesty is too much, you know, maybe the melody or something, her eyes started watering. And like, she looked at me, I was like, oh my God, this is like, it, I almost felt like, you know, wa watering up. It was so touching. But then I was replaying in my mind, I was like, what if she was crying because she was like, you just totally ruined that song. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Uh, grooming's like, the work and artistry that goes into grooming makes it really hard not to take things that person, exactly, because it's our, it's, it's not just a job for us, you know, this is our, this is our art, this is our expression, you know, this is how we express ourselves to the world, you know, through the dogs that we groom. And we put a lot of, a lot of emotional energy into it, you know, not just physical, but emotional, and it means so much to us. And it's just like a chef, how a chef puts so there's a pizza place called Bellagio's um, in, in Lawrenceville where I live and the guy was saying that you know people only see the 20 minutes that it takes to bake the pizza you know we put the toppings on it put in the oven the brick oven and that helps but put in the brick oven and 15 20 minutes we got a pizza you know and he's like everybody only focuses on that what they don't see 
is the hours that he spends every morning making fresh sauce for the day. You know, making sure the cheese is fresh and new, and you know, making sure that the dough, he makes dough every day fresh. You know, and he's saying that takes so that takes a lot of its day. It takes a long time. It takes hours to prepare all that. Then once all that's prepared, yeah, putting the pizza together and baking is no, it's easy. But everybody only sees the easy part, you know. And he was, and I, I told him, you know why? I understand why you go, you put all that effort in. Because you're a chef, you're not just a cook. I was like, you actually care about what people experience. You want them to enjoy your food. And I can tell, you know? And I, and I told him, even though I don't see the hours that you put in, I can taste it, you know? And that's what makes you an artist. And I feel the same thing, way about our dogs. Even though his mom, well, she knows because I'm here in her house, you know? <laughs> even, but, you know, even, let's say she didn't. Even though she didn't know, how much time and effort I put into this groom for her to enjoy because I really do want her to enjoy it. Even though she doesn't know or she doesn't see it, when she touches her dog, she feels it. Same thing as when I taste that pizza, I can taste it. You can taste the love that was put in there. Okay, I'm just gonna... I don't want to listen to it too much because I like I said he's a bit of a rascal so <laughs> he probably will try to jump if he feels like he can so I like to keep this on at least just for psychological reasons you know just he knows that it's there <laughs> and usually just having it just having it there is usually enough to stop him See that? Look at how easily that comes out. That's just all dead coat. That's last season's underwear. <laughs> last season's old clothes. Yeah. And because they don't have the luxury of buying new clothes like we do, they grow their, their clothes, they grow their outfit out of their skin. So this is how they stay fresh and clean and this is how they stay comfortable every season and protected from the elements by growing a new coat every season there we go so what these mats are they're there's not a lot of live hairs in here, not a lot of primary hairs. This is all secondary hairs. And what that means is that um, dog's hair does not grow in single units of hair like ours do. Um, their hair, each, fo each follicle is producing about 12 hairs per follicle, right? And inside a pore, there could be several follicles. So out of every opening, out of every pore, there could be like 24 to almost 50 hairs coming out of a single pore. Now, most of them are not the primary guard hairs that have a long lifespan, a life cycle. They're these fine, like goose down feathers. And, and, that's, and, and they play the same role, insulation, protection. And so if you ever see goose, the geese or ducks fight, um, and I was, I was lucky enough to see it, <laughs> the, the duck literally goes, pat pat with their beak, pat pat, right? And then there's like handfuls of down feathers that come out. And that's the same thing. Um, with it, think of it like, kind of like down feathers for dogs. And so that's why it's cycling through and, and dying off and you know needing to be replaced, cycled through because it's not the primary hair. It's, it's, that, it's that secondary hair, that undercoat hair that is uh, tangling up and needing to be combed out. But the hair you see that's left in, see it has color to it, you know? It's, it has more substance to it, you know? It's not so flimsy. Those are the guard hairs, and those stay in, and they continue to grow. Okay, Millie. Pulling out those little matte hairballs. Yeah, right? <clears throat> I, I love this. I mean, this work is almost therapeutic, you know? 
Look at that. And his progress, you know, Tony Robbins makes a really good point. He's saying that um, a lot of people think that it's the accomplishments that make you feel happy or proud of yourself. It's not. It's never the accomplishment itself. It's the progress, you know, it's the journey. And he's saying that usually when you have a goal that you're working towards and you're making noticeable progress towards it, that's when you feel the happiest. And then once the goal is achieved, it's almost like this deflated feeling like, huh, I thought I'd be happier than this, you know? What do I do now, you know? So it's never really the achievement of the goal, the accomplishment of the goal. It's, it's making the progress along the way. That's where real, you know, you feel excited. Okay. Oh, so Apollo Ono, he's, he, he's another contributor to that book, The Best Advice I Ever Got by Katie Couric. So Apollo Ono is a figure skater, skater um, gold medalist, very popular. Um, I've even heard of him and I don't follow <laughs> Winter Olympics. <clears throat> but Apollo Ono, hey, what's up, Chris from the UK? What's up? So Apollo Ono, in that book, he said that um, the race only lasts 40, 40 seconds. You know, he was saying that um, when the race was over, whether he won or not, he always kind of felt like, huh, that's it? You know, all that work for this? But he's saying that he realizes now that all the joy, all the, the sense of fulfillment, you know, that self-respect, that, that self-satisfaction, he's saying it didn't come from the 40 seconds. It came from the four years that he put in before to, to get to those 40 seconds, right? And I, I just thought that was such a beautiful way to put it, you know? Good boy, Percy. Look at you. Like a beautiful pro. Yes, you handsome man. Okay. And you would not believe it, but this dog tries to bite me when he's with his mom. He tries to bite everybody, you know, pretty much. Uh, it's the same, Sky Art says, it's the same feeling when I finish reading a book or watching a show. Yeah, right? It's like, that's it, you know? You know, but the journey, you know, making progress towards the, the end, that's, that's where all the fun is. Uh, Melly D, if you are really working on a dog and they really hate being brushed out, what do you do? So, um, so a lot of times, if, I'm, if it's the first time I'm doing a dog, then, Based on how it reacts, if I can tell they're, they're, a lot of this behavior pro is probably coming from the discomfort that they're feeling in that area, then I'll go ahead and just try to gently work patiently, be patient with them, be gentle, you know, but still firm, of course. And I'll work in one area out, like one back leg, and see if after it's combed out, after all of the mats and everything that's making them feel uncomfortable, once that's cleared out, if they behave better, if they're more willing to tolerate it, then, you know, then I'll go ahead and continue doing the rest of the dog. But if I can't even get through one area and they're just having a fit, especially if it's our first time, if it's our first date, then I'm not gonna push it. And I'll, I'll suggest to the owner, um, you know, we have to shave this dog because, you know, this is not gonna be a good first date. And the first date is everything. <clears throat> and that's exactly how I consider the first groom is like a first date, you know? And the first date, you don't wanna, you don't wanna talk about your parents and, you know, your rough childhood and, and your insecurities and how another girl did you wrong. These are not conversations that I would bring up on a first date, <laughs> you know? So it's just like that. You just wanna make it as, as easy and um, light as possible on the first visit, but that being said, again, if the dog is able to take, if the dog understands what I'm doing and they obviously look more relieved after I get it done, then yeah, I'll spend six, eight hours, you know, but I'll also give them plenty of breaks, you know, especially if they're, if it's their first time meeting me. So it's just, I use no way as the way, you know, we do have some set policies that we just came up with for our clients, 
But as far as when I'm actually grooming the dog and I'm actually interacting with the dog, you know, I just, I, I, I don't like to be so set and say, this is it no matter what, you know? <laughs> yeah, so I, I try to avoid uh, words like always or never, you know, because, you know, every situation is going to be different. And situations change, even as you're going through it, you know? Circumstances change, things happen. So, I like Bruce Lee's philosophy of being like water, being adaptable, and creative in certain situations. And using, using no way as your way, you know? Using no style as your style. There you go, Mercy. All right. So we almost have this whole half of him combed out already. Isn't that amazing? Look at this. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> now we just have to work on this front part here. And the crazy thing is, as I comb this hair out, he's already starting to smell better because this is what's holding on to all the unpleasant odors. Just like old clothes, you know? And just like how when you have a shirt, a t-shirt that's been left in the washer too long and dried, you don't really know until when you put it on because it's dry, you don't smell it. But then when you get to the office and you start sweating, you start to smell it. And you're like, oh, <laughs> this is the one that I left in the washer too long. You know, and same thing with the dogs. A lot of times when he's dry like this, you're not going to smell him. But as soon as you introduce some moisture or water, all of a sudden you get that smell. But now I don't. He actually sp smells, oh man, I just wanna rub my face in it. Mm. <laughs> Anyways, before I get too weird, you were like, oh, click, <laughs> wrong channel. Anyways, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it's, it's just amazing how, you know, not only do they smell better, they feel better, they're silkier, look at this. And the thing is, once we get this all detangled and get all these mats out, it's literally impossible for him to get this matted again within a few days. It's just not going to happen because all of this coat is being pulled out. And it's not there anymore to tangle. There's nothing to tangle. And the live hairs, they still have a while before they're going to die and get fuzzy. And so maybe in a month, you know, maybe in a few weeks, he'll, get, he'll, he'll have a few mats again, maybe in a few weeks. But... He's still gonna smell good too in a few weeks. You know, he's not gonna have that wet dog smell. <clears throat> you know, a lot of my uh, newer clients, this was a year ago, like a year and a half ago when I was taking new clients, a lot of them would tell me, I just can't believe how clean they look even after, you know, one person was like, I didn't even realize it was time for their groom. They still look groomed, you know? And they're saying that they've never, especially dogs with coats like this, long coats, they've never been able to go so long with their dogs still looking like they've just been groomed. And to me, that just, that's proof, that's proof in the pudding right there. Okay, so I just like, um, who was it? I think Connie and Melly. Um, it, it seems like you guys are groomers, right? Professional groomers. Uh, Connie and Melly 
Oh, Rachel as well. I think I've suggested this to Skyyard as well. Um, I, I recommend, you know, all groomers start their own YouTube channel and share information and be helpful. And here's why. Because little by little, a little becomes a lot. And I started this channel six years ago. And, you know, I never thought I was... I didn't even know you could earn money from YouTube. I didn't know. I mean, I, I heard people who were making money from YouTube, but they have millions of subscribers. And I just, I was like, I just, I can't figure that out. You know, it's not for me. Six years later, you know, just little by little, one, one subscriber at a time, and that one subscriber telling another person, one of their friends, and they subscribe. Little by little, a little became a lot. <laughs> and now, <clears throat> um, Corp big corporations and people consider me a social influencer. You know what? Well, how about that? So, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not taking any of those offers because I don't want to sell out. But it's just interesting to me, you know, that I went from being an absolute nobody to now corporations are calling me. Big corporations are emailing me and wanting me to, you know, spot, you know, you know show their product and things like that, give them a shout out. And I just, I just won't do it. But I think it's interesting that I'm getting those opportunities now. And also, YouTube is paying me ad revenue. And I'm, this is just me being completely transparent, just being completely honest. Um, the, well, not right now, because I didn't put any ads on this one. But after this live stream ends and it uploads onto my YouTube channel, anybody who watches it, a little commercial plays in the beginning. And if they watch the entire commercial, I, I get, you know, like a dollar or something, you know, I don't, I don't even know what it is, but <laughs> I get some money. If they skip the commercial, I get a little less. You know, I, I don't, actually, I don't get anything at all if they skip it. But anyways, <clears throat> and I've been getting an average of two to three hundred dollars a month now. And so that right there really kind of gives me a little breathing room, not just YouTube, but Amazon, affiliate links and things like that. And I've, I've talked about this before. But I think, you know, as professional groomers, it kind of gives us a little, a little side gig, a little part-time um, job, I guess, you know, where we can bring in, supplement our income with a little bit of passive income, money that comes in in our sleep, literally. And then, you know, it kind of gives you that freedom where you're not so stressed about money and you don't have to make decisions based on, you know, the fear of not being able to pay your bills. So, um, <clears throat> there's one client where the housekeeper, he called me a bad father. He, he, was, he was literally, like, I felt like he was doing a power play on me, right? And he gave me a time limit to finish the dogs that was impossible. I just, I, I told him that I don't have enough, that doesn't give me enough time to do it properly. And he was like, well, you've already been paid, right? <laughs> and I think that's where he thought he had me. Like, you need this money. And I, right there, I sent, I refunded the money back on PayPal. And I was like, I'm done. I'm never coming back here again. Why did I have the confidence to do that? Well, because I have money coming in to replace that, you know? Just being real, just being honest. Uh, Skyer, you are really the one of the best groomers out there because of your passion and love. Thank you. I'm not trying to be the best though, Skyer, and I'll admit that I'm not the best. But here's the thing. You don't try to be the best, try to be unique. Because when you're the best, you're number one. And you always have to defend that, and that's stressful. But if you're unique, you're the only one. Um, Melly D, I'm so awkward when I groom. I talk to the dogs and make up songs for them and just generally sound like a crazy person. I feel like people would cringe if I made videos. <laughs> that's what you think. But I mean, I've sang, you know, at the risk of losing clients. I mean, not like, losing subscribers and viewers. Um, I fumble around, I, I make a lot of mistakes, but I think it's, it's just about being your genuine self, you know? And the, here's the thing, Seth Godin, uh, Seth, not Seth, Seth Godin, Seth, yeah, Seth Godin, he was saying that um, there, there is no um, mass market anymore. He was saying the market has been broken up into these small sub-markets now. And he was saying that the weirder you can get, <laughs> the more of those weird people you're gonna to attract to you. And he's saying that um, it's not good to play in the middle, you know, and try to be middle of the road and please everyone. He was saying then 
you end up doing mediocre work for the masses rather than doing extraordinary, remarkable work for the few, right? And making a bigger impact on the few. So he was saying that the weirder you can get <laughs> and, and still be authentic, you know, you're not trying to put on an act. You're not trying to be weird. You just are weird. <laughs> like I'm weird. But that's the thing. It's like the more I show my weird side, <laughs> like Rachel Skyart, she digs it, you know? <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it's like you don't wanna you don't wanna be all things for all people. You know, you just want the people who believe what you believe and are weird the way you're weird. You want them to be able to find you. And that's why I think putting out the YouTube channel and putting yourself out there is so important because then you're giving those weirdos who may feel alone, you're giving them a way to find you. And they'll say, hey, wait a minute, this person's weird like I'm weird. <laughs> and they'll, they'll tell their other friends, their other weird friends, you know? Like, I, I just found this guy, he's so weird, but he's weird the way I, I like his weird, you know? And then they'll be like, oh man, he is weird, I like this. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, yeah, you don't wanna be perfect. Actually, that's a turn off, you know? Did any more comments come in? Any compliments? Oh, right on time. Uh, <laughs> Skyart says, June sings and dances too. Thank you, Skyart. Um, LLJL, LOL, that's my kind of people that don't sell out. That's what makes you special, June. You're honest and full. Thank you, LLJL. Shoot. If I ever meet LL Cool J, I'm gonna tell him about you. <laughs> Alrighty. Okay. LLJ, I was probably like, don't, that's my cousin, we're not on speaking terms. <laughs> oh, see, like right here behind the neck. That's pretty thick. And that's common, because that's usually where the collar rubs. Okay. Anything else? Oh, Melly, I just ordered one of those mat breaker knife things. I'm a bit scared to use it, not gonna lie. Yeah, yeah, it is a little scary. And also, uh, whenever I have my hands here underneath and I go through some, I have cut my hands before. Actually, this little thing's healing up now. See that? I cut my, so, <laughs> yeah, it is a bit scary. But that's the thing, the practice makes improvements it doesn't make perfect because there's no such thing as perfect. Practice makes improvements. So the more you practice, the more you use it, the more it will start to feel like an extension of your own hand, you know, and it just feels more natural. And yeah, one day you just start flowing, you know, it just starts to flow. Uh, it's all common, okay. June, Georgina Barbotis. June, I missed the beginning, but was this dog really mad at and do you use it? Yes. So, I haven't done this side yet, but what was that? Georgina, I haven't done this side yet. So let's just say that these are two different dogs at the grooming shop, right? This dog has been combed out. Just look at that. So this dog, when I wash, when I wash him, he's gonna be cleaner. He's just gonna get much better results and look softer and silkier. This dog here, let's say these are two different dogs. Look at this. See, it doesn't budge because Look at that, it's all just mats. See that? It's all just like compacted hair, see that? All just big balls of, of mats. So yeah, I haven't done this side yet, which is why it looks like that, see that? So that's how the other side looked, Georgina, before I started. But now I can take the fine tooth side and go right through. See how it slides like butter? 
Now, you don't start with this to break up this. You want to start with the mat splitter here. Uh, Erica, June, what do you think is a Havanese as a breed? I have a Shizu and was thinking about getting a Havanese puppy. Are Havanese good with other dogs? Um, see, that's the thing. It's kind of like saying, um, you know, it's kind of like saying, June, I dated an Asian guy before in college and he was kind of weird and he was a little abusive and you seem like a good guy, but you're Korean too. And, you know, I dated a Korean that was abusive. Are you going to be abusive too? You know, because you're Korean, <laughs> you know, or the opposite. You know, I hate. June, I dated a Korean guy back in college and we had such an amazing experience. You know, things didn't really work out, but you're Korean too. And so let's go ahead and date. You know, it's like, you know, uh, I don't think it's breed specific. You know, I don't think that Havanese, you know, as a breed, as you know, as like a race of people, you know, <laughs> I don't think we can say, generalize and say, oh yeah, they're all good with dog, with other dogs and people. Because there are some Shizus who are super sweet, and there are other Shizus who act like a like a lion, you know, like a really angry lion. <laughs> so, but it's not the it's not the breed; it's that individual dog. So, I would say if you're considering a Havanese, you know, maybe meet the Havanese first and introduce it to your dog and see how they get along, because, you know, um, <clears throat> it's kind of like. It's kind of like uh, generalizing people's race, you know, saying like, oh, you know, I, I, I've had a, I've had such great experiences with Spanish people, you know, <laughs> so I only want to work with Spanish people, you know, it's like, hey, wait a minute, but what happens when you meet a Spanish guy that's not so nice, you know, it's not Spanish people that are not nice, it's just that one guy, you know, okay. Uh... Okay, sorry, it's weird, but I like demanding dogs. It makes them clean, calm. Yes, I, I love it. I love seeing the change. Um, Georgina, how long does it take you so far? What a difference. So a little over an hour. We've been streaming for 77 minutes. <laughs> um, Skyar, I don't hate demanding dogs necessarily. I just get very anxious about potentially hurting the dogs and irritating their skin and stuff. So then I get stressed out and then the dogs get upset. Exactly. So yeah, you just have to find your own you know, your own personal style that you're comfortable with, you know? We're all artists, and it would be silly for one artist to go and tell another artist how they should be doing their job, you know? It's like uh, if Picasso started critiquing Van Gogh's artwork and saying, you know, <laughs> abstract is really where you should be going, you know? Like, no, you know, every artist paints differently. But here's the thing, art, what makes art, art? What makes an artist an artist? Seth Godin, according to Seth Godin, there has to be an element of generosity. When Michelangelo painted the Sistine Chapel, he wasn't doing it for the money, I promise you that. You know, he was being generous to the rest of the world by providing us something awe-inspiring, you know? And he broke his back in the process, literally, he broke his back. Um, but that's the thing, it's because his art was, he was so passionate about it and it was so generous, you know, <clears throat> and that's what makes artwork, artwork and vulnerable, you know, he, he did all of that and broke his back with knowing, knowing that there's a good possibility the Pope could look at it and say, mm, nah, I don't like it, you know, he, he, that was a, that was a real possibility and he knew it, but he still did it. That's what makes an artist an artist, the possibility that could fail, that it could not work makes you vulnerable, but you do it anyways, and that's called generosity. And so, <laughs> encourage. So, um, he's saying, the people in a village called Dafin in China, they produce almost like a third of all the oil paintings available on sale in the world. They all come from this one little village, right? And the people there are painters, they're not artists. They're not taking any risks. They're not make, creating anything new. They're taking something that's already been proven that people like, like the Mona Lisa, and they'll make hundreds of them, thousands of them. And you can buy the Mona Lisa there for 30 bucks, but it's not the Mona Lisa, you know? They didn't take any risk. They didn't, 
you know, they're just copying. So they're painters, they're not artists. Same thing with groomers. We have a choice. We can be artists or we can be groomers. But being a painter doesn't make you an artist, just like being a dog groomer doesn't make you an artist. It's the way it's done. It's the generosity. It's the vulnerability. And you know, it's doing it because you actually care, you know? And you're doing something that it might not work and that's kind of new, you know, and scary. And <clears throat> that's what makes an artist an artist. So um, he uses a really great analogy. The first person who ever installed a urinal, designed it, came up with the design for the urinal and installed it at an art exhibit, right? The second person to install the urinal was a plumber. The first person was an artist because he created something that didn't exist before and it might not have worked, it was risky, but he did it anyways because he thought it could help. You know, he was being generous. And then the second person who saw, oh, there's a demand for this and installs it, he's not an artist. He's a plumber. <laughs> Same thing with uh, chefs. A chef is not a cook who follows a recipe, you know? A cook who follows a recipe is just a cook. A chef takes chances, takes risks, and comes up with new ideas and new recipes. So you can be a chef or you can be a cook. You can be a groomer or you can be an artist. It's really our choice. You know, nobody's stopping us from being either, you know? <clears throat> oh my goodness. <clears throat> so Mario Batali is a celebrity chef, and he, um, his, he actually comes first in that book, The Best Advice I Ever Got. <clears throat> but I love how he explains what a recipe is. He's saying that people think that a recipe is a step-by-step -step instructions. He's saying they're not, you know? <laughs> A recipe is just someone's suggestion that got written down. It's just someone's idea that got written down. And he's saying you don't have to follow the recipe. In fact, the person who probably came up with the recipe would probably prefer you didn't and probably would prefer you add some of this or that and add your own unique flair, you know? And so he's saying that recipes are, are just ideas, just suggestions, guidelines. And so he's saying, you know, you, when, here's the quote, when cooking up your own life, don't allow anyone else's recipe for success to intimidate you or get in your way. Know your own truth and live by it. That's Mario Batali. I loved it. I loved it. So he's saying life is not a recipe. And even if life was a recipe, a recipe is not a step-by-step -step guide. It's not a set of instructions. It's a set of suggestions. You know, the amazing thing is, several people have told me already, my wife included, <laughs> that I talk too much and I tend to get too preachy. And there's, you know, they were telling me like, you know, I have to be more kind of middle of the road, just more, you know, like you talk too much, you know, it's not really fun to watch and you get preachy. Everything that I was told wouldn't work is actually the reason why people say that they love my channel. <laughs> Georgina, I love listening to your philosophy online. Thank you, Georgina. Alrighty. Oh, Skyler says, yeah, I understand, especially when the dog is jumpy, baby, but be afraid. Exactly, hurting a dog makes me, Melly says, hurting a dog makes me feel like the worst person. Exactly. Yeah, and it never gets any easier. Even when it's an accident, I, I always think about quitting my job. <laughs> but I like your preachies. Oh, thank you, Rachel. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. It's because you're weird. <laughs> you're weird like I'm weird. So as long as we just show our weird side and just be honest and genuine, weird people like you will find you. <laughs> Alrighty. I'm sorry I called you weird, Rachel. <laughs> but if you like me, you probably are weird. <laughs> Weirdos unite.
unite, right? We should make that a hashtag. Hashtag weirdos unite. <laughs> Alrighty. Maybe we can even make like a weirdo get together, you know, like a weirdo powwow or something. <laughs> a weirdo conference. Weirdo con. We can make a weirdo con. <laughs> Don't worry, I think I'm weirder than you. <laughs> well then, your channel might do better than mine, actually. <laughs> go, go completely weird, go all out, you know? Okay, buddy. So we got this back leg almost all detangled. Just a few more tight areas. There you go, Percy. So now Percy, the very first time I did this, he was not like this. He was very jumpy and, and very hard to control. So, you know, that's the thing. By seeing this progress, by seeing him behaving better for this, it makes me feel so good. You know, we're making progress. Uh, groomers are weirdos. <laughs> well, uh, Wanda K, unique, not weird. Yeah, I guess so. I'm uniquely weird. <laughs> Melly B, Melly D says, you have to be weird to willingly put up with what we do and enjoy it. I guess so, yeah. And the thing is, <laughs> I never really realized that because I, I, I actually, <laughs> I'm having the time of my life. I love this. I love spending time with dogs and helping them feel better, doing something for this dog that he can't do it for himself. It makes me feel so good. And, but I was, I was teaching someone else this, right? <laughs> And they just put down, the, you gotta pay me $500 for this. I'm not doing this, you know? And one guy, um, he was uh, living in the apartment complex behind our shop. And so, you know, I offered him a job and as a bather. And I thought he would like it. He even thought he, he would like it. After a couple days, he was like, nah, you can have this. <laughs> and I was like, what? You mean you don't like this? And he was like, nah, nah, what are you talking about? Like, are you crazy? No. And I was like, what? And I just, I don't know. I think that was the first time I realized, like, Maybe I'm weird. <laughs> okay. Uh, what did that say? E, uh, Laura, Laura says, I like your preachy side too. As long as you keep on explaining the technique, for me, it's perfect. I also want to know about you as a person. So for me, it's fun. Oh, thank you, Laura. Welcome to the Weirdo Club. <laughs> Weirdo Con, scheduled for September, right? 2019, let's do it. <laughs> we'll meet at the weirdest place possible. I haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> Alrighty. So, now that we've got most of the mats broken up and pulled out with this uh, dematting rake, now I'm gonna go through and clear out the rest of those, you know, pin mats, those little balls of matted hair, tangled hair. We're just gonna get it all. See that? How it, it, it resists, it pulls, right? So you pull it back out. And then you could even go with the wider side. Sometimes that helps. There we go. There we go. That was what was causing all that trouble. Oh no, there's another one. There we go. See that? So it's not by force. And the hair around it is already dead. So you don't have to really put a lot of pressure to it. You just gotta kind of tease it. There we go. You're okay, buddy. Good boy, Percy. All right. There we go. See that? <clears throat> so, you know, when owners ask me, like, you know, uh, what's a low maintenance dog? You know, I want a dog where I don't really have to do a lot of maintenance, you know? That's why I got a long haired doodle because they said that I didn't have to take care of it. It's just a low maintenance, easy hypogenic coat, you know? And it's like, 
for me, I feel like if they only knew what they were saying, it's kind of like saying, I want a friendship, but I don't want to work towards it. You know, I don't want to put any work into it. It's like, but that's what makes a relationship so special is the work that you put into it, right? Okay. I need to start keeping money for that goal now. Hashtag weirdo con. <laughs> Uh, Laura Miloslavich, thanks. You know what, Skyheart, though? Maybe we'll make it really weird and pay you to come. That'll be really weird, right? <laughs> Do you always brush out before you bathe, whether it's matted or not? Yes, because if I washed him as is with the mats, it's gonna make everything worse. Long story short, it makes everything worse. I can get into the science of it, and you know, but I've already done that in other videos. Melly D, I want to find the person who started the rumor that doodles are low maintenance and give them a piece of my life. <laughs> yeah, but you know, what I, what I tell them is like, it should be an honor to put in the work and the time and maintain your dog and comb them out, you know? It should be an honor to do that for your dog, you know? It's a small way that we can repay them for their loyalty, for they're you know being there for us emotionally you know never judging us always helping us feel accepted and helping with our anxiety sometimes you know i've had several panic and anxiety attacks where my dog came up to me and i felt better you know that's this is such a small price to pay to show our dogs you know that we care about them and we appreciate them laura i guess it's a mistake to wash a dog with bad mats right you would make it worse right yes it's gonna, it's gonna make it tighter. Um, first of all, it takes a lot more shampoo to even lather, get the good lather through the coat because all of this hair is just gonna keep absorbing it. So I use a lot more product, which I don't like to do because the products I use are expensive. <laughs> and so it, I, you, know, you use a lot less soap, first of all, to get, him, to get the same or better results. Also, the rinse time is shortened because you know, as you can tell, obviously, with all of these mats still in here, it's gonna be hard to get a cl good clean rinse. On this side, where it's nice and smooth, the water's gonna rinse off so easily. I mean, the soap will rinse off so easily. So, yeah, it's, <clears throat> you know what? I, I, <laughs> I'm getting much better at making um, shrimp scampi now. And what I used to do is I used to just cook the shrimps. Um, the first time I cooked shrimp scampi, I didn't even peel the shrimp. They still had the skin on, right? And nobody enjoyed it. <laughs> Second time, I, I, I got, I kind of peeled it, but I left the tails on, right? And the third time I made it, <laughs> I peeled all of the, I got all of it off, even the tails, but I didn't slice down the middle and get the guts out, you know? that vein and poo. <laughs> so this last time that I made shrimp scampi, I was so proud of myself because I was, uh, I, I peeled all of the shrimp and sliced down the middle and cleaned them out before I made, I cooked it. And it just made the meal so much more enjoyable for everyone, right? By taking that extra time. And at first, I'll admit, the first like five or six shrimp that I did, I was just thinking to myself, this is gonna take forever, you know? I gotta start cooking, I gotta get to the cooking. But after, after about 10 of them, I actually started to get in a good groove. And I was, I was peeling those shrimp like a, like a pro, <laughs> you know, because you just get used to the same movements. So you get better and faster. But yeah, it's, it's kind of like that. It's like everything has a process. So yeah, before I wash, I wanna comb because I want the results to be enjoyable for my clients. I don't wanna just cook the shrimp, you know? I wanna make sure they know that I care. <laughs> okay. Uh, Skyer, when, a customer, when I get customers saying that they want a low maintenance dog and they don't wanna cut the hair, and I often say, then get a short coat chihuahua. <laughs> um, what if the mat is too bad? Shave it off? Yes. Um, Melly D, I'm going after, I'm going to offer another perspective. Sometimes the hair dryer can help break up tangles on certain types of coats. So sometimes I will wash the dog before brushing it out and blower helps. Yeah, yeah, if it's not this compacted, you know. Every groomer does different things though. There's no wrong way as long as the dog is happy. Exactly, exactly. 
you know, Buddha says it another way. The, uh, Buddha, he says, when we're going through the jungle of life, it would be unwise to tell someone else you're going the wrong way. I guess only after you've gone through it and come out the other side, that's when you can let people know, hey, I found a way. But again, that's not even the only way. You know, there's many ways out of the jungle. You know, who's to say that your way is the right way or my way is the right way, you know? So yeah, I like, I like using no way as the way and also not trying to impose my will or my thoughts on other people. You know, and I don't want anyone to think that by me being preachy and sharing my thoughts and philosophies that I'm asking you to adopt my thoughts. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm just sharing my thoughts so that people, like Laura said, so that she can get to kind of understand who I am, where I'm coming from. Alrighty. Grooming, oh, Grooms by Nicole. Hey, what's up, Grooms by Nicole? Uh, I would, I would, I also would rather remove masks before, yes, I agree. Uh... Okay, Laura, good comparison. It makes sense. I always brush before the bath now. Perfect. Uh, Melly, mats this bad though would have been removed before the bath. Deciding which way to go gets better with experience. Exactly, exactly. And that's the thing, it's like, even, <clears throat> even after almost 10 years of me grooming dogs now, I still will run into a coat and think to myself, ooh, what do I do with this, you know? <laughs> and that's good. It keeps me on my toes. It keeps me creative. And thinking of new, you know, different ways to approach different problems. And that's one thing I love about my job is that I've always kind of been, I've always had like a spontaneous creative, you know, nature. But then again, I crave structure. I crave, you know, that I guess the stability, safety. I, I want to know that things are gonna be okay, you know? So I do crave structure, but then again, there's a part of me that craves that spontaneous, creative, you know? So I think that this gives me the best of both worlds. It gives me that safety and security, knowing that I'm booked out every single day, I, you know, is, is packed on, my, on our schedule for the rest of the year. We have 15 people on a waiting list right now, and you know, we just went up on prices and, you know, like, so this gives me a lot of that security, that um, structure that I crave, but also every single day is different though. You know, <laughs> I, I, I didn't know what I was coming into when I came here, even though I know the dog, you know, but still, you know, you just, every, every day gives a little bit of a, you know, different challenges to overcome. And so that, kind of satisfies my, you know, creative side, my spontaneous side, you know, but I also get the, you know, structure that I need by having a set schedule and people who are scheduled, you know, and I know that on this day I'm going here, things like that. But even though I know that like on a certain day I'm going to someone's house, I don't know exactly what's going to happen when I get there. And that's what makes it fun. Okay. Oh, Grooms by Nicole. Especially dogs that have been matted for a while and likely have compromised skin health, like getting the mats off first to get down to the skin, exactly, with the medication, exactly. That way the, the shampoo actually has room to get in those pores and actually condition that skin and, and, and provide the medication that's in there. Um, but yeah, it's, and I'm not trying to change other groomers. Now, I'm not trying to say that groomers who just shave, who just shave this coat down are wrong, because obviously, how long has this been? 99 minutes, almost an hour and a half. Well, yeah, it is an hour and a half, more than that. So over an hour and a half already. Most groomers would already be done with the dog, completely done in an hour and a half. So, yeah, I mean, I completely understand. And I went out of business. I lost my business. I went severely in debt. My car got repoed, you know? And a lot of my clients told me that I lost my business because I did business with my heart, not my head, you know? And I still do business with my heart, but now my wife 
runs the business side, <laughs> the administrative and all that. And so she has a good business mind. She has a good head on her shoulders. So now we have a heart and head <laughs> to run the business. Laura, you are booked out. I'm so happy for you. Thank you, Laura. Thank you so much. But again, it's not like I'm, you know, rolling in the dough or anything, you know? It's not about that. It's not about that at all. You know, I charge for my service, not my time. And so, you know, I'm only able to do maybe one or two dogs a day. And, you know, that means that even if I was charging $160 for both dogs, you know, the most I can make that day is $320. So, you know, it's not like I'm getting rich over here, but that's why I'm so, I'm so grateful for this YouTube channel and, you know, other sources like Amazon, my book sales, you know, the royalties from the book sales. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful and blessed. And I'm, I'm completely aware that all of this has come from you guys, from the generosity of my, my, our supporters, because I've never paid for an ad. I've never paid for an ad. I've never paid for subscribers or anything. It's all happened organically because of you, because of you guys. And I, I, I'll never forget that. I really appreciate that. Melly D, I would unfortunately have to charge a customer a lot of money if I was gonna spend 90 minutes brushing. I wish that wasn't the case. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> and I, trust me, when I was losing my shop and I was in debt, I would even sit here questioning myself, what in the world am I doing, you know? I would have these mental conflicts and struggles and I would go home with a headache because, you know, on one side it's like I do love doing this and I do see the benefits and I do see why it's important to do it, but then I see my bills not getting paid and I see my landlord threatening to kick us out, you know? And yeah, and I go home and my fridge is empty, you know? And so, yeah, I, I totally get it. And that's why I will not recommend or suggest any other professional groomer to do what I did because it was terrifying, especially with two, you know, two beautiful daughters. I was walking with my daughters to Walmart during the snowstorm and I was just so scared that they might get sick, they might catch cold or something might happen, they might slip and fall, knowing that I absolutely had no way to pay for a doctor if they got sick. I had no money. I didn't, have a, I didn't even have a car, which is why we were walking to Walmart. I didn't have a car to drive them to the doctor. So it was the scariest time and the hardest time of my life. And I don't wish it upon anybody. I always try to clean. Wow, I can't type right now. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, buddy. See, so right there is really tough. Uh, like, it's really tight right here and I'll show you how he reacts. So I'm going here. Oh, he won't do it for the camera. He was kind of nibbling at my hand, my fingers, to let me know. Oh, he's not doing it. Camera shy, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, since he, since he told me that it was uh, bothering him, I'm gonna go through with this. But can you believe it? We're already on the last leg. Look, all of this, all of this is combed out now. Look at that. We're on the last leg. <laughs> so yeah, we just, you know, keep at it. And then eventually you get to the point where it's like, wow, you know, we did it. We accomplished it, you know. But again, it's not really the accomplishment of the goal that's going to bring you contentment or satisfaction. You know, it's, it's the, the process, you know, it's the journey. Good boy. Okay. Oh, you know, Melly, Mel D, Melly, and, uh, and Connie, and Grooms by Nicole, um, maybe what you could do is, uh, you know, after this live stream is over, it'll still be on my channel, uh, maybe what you could do is, you know, for the clients that are giving you a hard time, calling you lazy, you know, demanding that you save their coat, 
uh, maybe show them this video. Maybe they'll have them watch it and let them know. It's over an hour long. It's like two hours. It's gonna be like two hours of just brushing, you know? And if you're, if you're able to get through it, then you know, you'll know exactly how to save your dog's coat, you know? But just explain to them. I don't have that kind of time to spend on just your dog, you know? You'll go out of business and you'll go in debt and they'll take your car. <laughs> You know, Jim Rohn, <clears throat> Jim Rohn, uh, this was back in the 80s when he said this, but he was saying that it used to be that once you got down to zero, that was it, you know, game over. But now they'll give you credit and you can zoom right past zero, <laughs> go way deep in the negative. <laughs> and I, I can, I can attest to that. Okay. How can I sharpen that DMAT tool? Um, I, I would just buy a replacement blade for it. Um, I think that would be much easier. Uh, what a cutie pie soul one says. That's, uh, Mel says that's a good idea. Awesome. And then I get more view counts, baby. Cha -ching. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, anyone know how to sharpen that silver DMAT tool? So I've had this for about four years now. And I used it a lot on a lot of different dogs. And I guess the blade is kind of dulled down. But you don't really need it to be that sharp. And yeah, Melody says the replacement blades are not expensive at all. They're really not. Okay. Good boy, we're almost done, buddy. Percy, we're almost done. Well, we're almost done dematting you. <laughs> then I gotta wash him and dry him and do the haircut. Okay. Good shape. Oh, you know what? <laughs> I got carried away. I forgot to... I was wondering why it's it's much tougher on this side than the other side. There we go. Spray. And right, I'm using Bark Logic Calming Spray. The Calming Leave-In Spray is lavender. Alrighty. Uh, Grooms, I've been giving a client... I, I've been known to give a client a brush and a comb and offer to let them sit in my lobby and brush the dog out for me. They usually last two minutes and then they say, just shave it. Ha! <laughs> Great idea, the girls by Nicole. Uh, Julia Underwear, buy blades from where? Pet Edge? That's where I got them. But I hear Pet Edge is going out of business and I don't know. So, but again, um, if you don't have a dematting blade, whoa, what you can do is use your scissors, all right? I'll just use this one since this one's straight. But see, I have a cutting side on this side, but you can use your scissors and use your scissors and do the same thing. See that? Just get under the mat and cut it. I'll do this because it has a sharper point. See that? So it's doing the same thing as that dematting uh, knife. It's just you have to be a little more careful with the scissors, <laughs> you know. But yeah, see that? You just go through and just cut it. And you want to go along with the, the growth of the hair. You want to go with the grain. See that? So don't get too caught up on the tools, you know. So if you don't want to use your scissors, because it will dull your scissors out faster. So if you don't want to use your scissors, then um, grab a kitchen knife, you know? <laughs> like, I don't, want to, I don't want you to get too caught up on the tools and then say like, oh, well, I can't find a dematting, you know, knife like that. So I guess I can't do it. No, find another alternative. Get a kitchen knife, you know, get a pocket knife. Uh, get a pair of scissors, you know? Find a way. There's always a different way. There's not just one way to do things. Sky, I use dematting scissors, but I think trying out that blade would be a good idea. Yeah, just because the way it's shaped even, it just, I like it, it makes it easier. But like I said, if I didn't have this available, I would still find something else that would work. Alrighty. Oh. Soul one. Um, 
what kind of speech do you give your clients that like their dog in long coats? It's getting tougher. Ugh. It's getting tougher. No, it's, it's tough getting mine to take me seriously when I say you need to brush them multiple times a week. Any tips? Yeah, so I, I've stopped trying to you know, explain to my clients. They either get it or they don't now. I just realized that. And it's like, so once I realized how hard it was to change myself and change the things that I believe and the things that I think, then I realized if it's this hard to control myself and change myself and I have complete control over myself, usually, <laughs> but the option is there at least. The option to control myself is always there and I still have a hard time controlling myself and changing myself. Now I realize it's impossible to change anybody else, you know? So, yeah, I, now I've, I don't really give my clients a speech or anything. I just, they either give me the time to let me do what I need to do and they trust me, or they don't. And if they don't, that's okay. You know, I'll, I'll groom someone else's dog that does trust me. So, again, I like to draw inspiration from other artists. And just like a chef, if, if I were to order a very nice dish from a, you know, very nice fancy restaurant, <coughs> and because... I don't really go to fancy restaurants. I wouldn't know how to eat the food, really. <laughs> and, um, it, you know, like, let's say a fancy plated dish comes out, and I just start going in it, you know, I just start digging in, right? Like I would at Waffle House. <laughs> and what if, you know, the chef comes out of the kitchen and starts to lecture me, you know, on how I'm eating this food improperly, and how much this food means to him, and how hard it was, and the dedication, and the passion that goes into this, and you know, I don't even belong in the restaurant and what am I doing there if I don't even know? See, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have a good experience and I would make sure everybody that I knew, knew about it, <laughs> you know? And so I don't want to be that angry chef, you know? And I think that sometimes um, I came off that way, especially when I'm sweating and I spent all this time and sometimes I would feel a little frustrated because I'm tired, you know, I'm exhausted. And I feel like a lot of times that could have come off the wrong way, like an angry chef, you know? So I realized I'm, I'm not gonna follow the food off the table anymore. I'm just gonna create the dish, let it go out, and then let the people who ordered it enjoy it if they like. If they don't, then don't come back, you know? <laughs> but I think, you know, my job as an artist is just to produce the art, you know? So I don't explain things to my clients anymore. And if they did want an explanation, I have so much material that I've already put out on my, on my website, my blog, the videos I've made on YouTube, you know, everything. I put so much explanation out there <laughs> that if my clients really wanted an explanation, they can get it easily. Just go to my website, you know? But I feel like, you know, that's why they're paying me because they don't really have time to care for it, you know? and they love the fact that I care so much, and that's why they hired me, right? Alrighty. Juliet, what are DMAT scissors? Okay, cool, so she's answering that. Thanks for the live stream, June. I have to go, unfortunately. See you next, bye, Melly. thank you so much. Awesome analogy, love it. So one, oh, thank you, thank you. I've been working on that analogy for a few years now. I'm good, I'm glad it came out, okay. <laughs> I felt like I rushed it. Did I rush it? That was good. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but that chef analogy, following the food out to the table, that's a Jun Yoon original, baby. <laughs> that was good. Oh, Yoon is my last name. It rhymes. Jun Yoon. <laughs> well, there's a son in there. So Jun Sun Yoon is my real name. But um, yeah, uh, Jun Yoon is how, you know, I went... You know, how, how my name was read in most classes and stuff. So yeah, growing up, you know, I realized very quickly, I have, to, I have to develop a good sense of humor or I have to be like a Kung Fu master and just beat up everybody <laughs> that made fun of my name, you know? Uh, Sky Heart. You said that analogy before too. Yeah, I was refining it. I was refining it. So hopefully, <laughs> I've been, I told you, I've been working on that analogy for a while now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 
You know, it does feel good to feel understood though. And that's why I appreciate, you know, everybody who watches our YouTube channel and our videos. And, and they help, you help me feel like someone understands me, even if my clients don't. And I, I really appreciate that. You have no idea how many hard nights that got me through, you know? You know, now that I think about it, I'm absolutely positive that if I didn't have my YouTube channel during those times when it really got rough and I lost my business a couple times, um, I don't know if I would have made it. I, I Maybe I would have gone back to car sales by now, you know? So the fact that I'm here doing this, you know, I really, I really have to thank you guys and my wife, my wife as well. Alrighty. So I've been watching you since I started grooming years ago. Wow, thank you. Love your approach to grooming. I feel like you're June the peaceful girl. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, uh, where is the comment? How come it's not showing? Oh, there it is. Uh, you can, Laura says, you can give customers advice, but not too much. They don't want to hear anything negative. But I do tell them why brushing is important. If you tell them very nicely, uh, very nicely from the time, from time to time, it works. Yeah, yeah. But again, um, I know I should clean up my diet and exercise, but it's just so hard to do what I know is right to do, right? So that's what I'm saying. Knowing how hard it is to control myself and change my own behaviors, and I have control over that. <laughs> now I realize, you know, it's an exercise in futility and frustration to try to change others. <clears throat> oh, that reminds me. Um, oh. Skyar, yes, finally marble like Wagyu beef now. Yeah, <laughs> I vote for Trump. I put Donald Trump in the White House. Trump is king. Oh, okay, good for you, buddy. <laughs> Anyways, um, <clears throat> what, what did I gonna? I totally understand what you mean. Do the right thing. The patient's pay. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> oh yeah, that reminds me. Okay, about changing others. So there's a there's a theory called the one hundred monkey theory. The hundred monkey theory. What about using letter opener? Slitter? Yes, that can that can work. I have a plastic piece that could go against the dog's skin, breaks up the mat razor. Yes, I'll just be careful with it because you don't want to poke the skin. Also, there are those like um, um, seam splitters, you know, that seamstresses uses. Um, that works as well. But again, it's a very sharp point. You want to be careful. Alrighty. <laughs> Anyways, <clears throat> so there's a theory called the one hundred monkey theory. When I learned this, it changed my life. It changed everything. I was in Chambly. This was after I lost my business in Buckhead and I was in debt. Um, I, I hadn't lost my car at this point. At this point, I still had my car. It wasn't repoed yet. <laughs> and I'm at this spiritual living center because I'm looking for some answers, you know, some hope, some motivation, you know. So I'm at this spiritual living center and the Reverend there, Dr. I mean, the Reverend David Alt, um, I, you know, I love that guy. Uh, <clears throat> he tells us about the hundred monkey theory. And the hundred monkey theory is basically these um, scientists were studying these monkeys off the South, South Pacific Islands. And these monkeys um, would eat the sweet potatoes growing on the island, right? And one monkey in particular, this one monkey, would take his sweet potato down to the ocean and rinse it in the ocean before he eats it. So he wouldn't have to, you know, put up with the dirt in his mouth and he would have a clean sweet potato to eat. Now the other monkeys started watching him do this, right? And then one by one, they started to mimic him. They started copying his behavior. They went to the, you know, they would wash their sweet potatoes, right? Before eating them. Now, after about 100 of these monkeys on this island started doing this, the same species of monkeys that shared the same DNA 
across like miles away on this other island that you know they, they don't swim to each other there's no cell phones or texting they had no way of communicating with each other but yet these other monkeys on this other island started doing the same thing they started washing their sweet potatoes before eating it and <clears throat> to me that was amazing you know <laughs> and so he was saying that the theory is that there's a tipping point in consciousness right when one species of animals um, adopts a beneficial behavior then after enough of them start to do it it becomes kind of genetically coded in that species right it, in their consciousness I guess and so even though these other monkeys on the other island had no way of communicating with this, these monkeys they started to adopt that same behavior because enough monkeys on this other island started doing it so then <laughs> this was about the time where I was like really gung-ho and just you know, I was upset. I was upset with everything because I lost my business and everything. I was embarrassed. And so I, I was really at attacking other groomers um, and just criticizing the way they were grooming and they, they don't take the time to do what I do. And so I thought I was trying to change the industry. I thought I was trying to help, you know, make, make the world a better place, you know, change the world. Really what I was doing was I was showing everybody what an idiot I was, right? <laughs> I was just showing my true colors and it made me look bitter, which I was, made me look resentful, which I was, and it, it actually hurt me a lot more than it benefited me, right? It made me look like a bitter, angry person. And so I raised my hand, right? And I asked Reverend David Alt, I was like, um, I was like, did that monkey try to you know, encourage the other monkeys to do what he was doing? Like, what happened? They just watched him and they just did it? He didn't try to convince them that this was a better way to eat the sweet potato? And <laughs> David goes, I don't know, I'm not a monkey sidekick or anything. <laughs> he was like, I don't know how those monkeys think, but he was like, yeah, I, I, I guess you're onto something. He was like, I don't think that, you know, he started a campaign or anything, or he tried to get those monkeys to change their behavior. He was just doing it just for him. And he was like, you know, I guess maybe if he were, if he did try to change the other other monkey's mind and he tried to start a campaign, we should wash our sweet potatoes. The other monkeys, he would have probably been met with resistance, right? Don't tell us how to eat our sweet potatoes. You know, throw it at him, you wash it, you know? So I, I just realized, whoa, it changed my life. So now I have 100 groomer theory. <laughs> So I'm not trying to change anybody anymore. I'm just doing this because it makes me feel good. And it makes you know, me happy to know that the dog's happy. You know, and my clients are happy. I'm doing this for me. And now other people are watching me. And by me not trying to change anybody, people are changing. And they're emailing me and telling me, wow, I, I, I brushed my dogs now, you know, before I wash them. And all the skin issues went away. The hot spots went away, you know? So... <laughs> I have a theory that after about a hundred groomers start to do this, there's going to be a tipping point in consciousness. And at that point, it really doesn't even matter who gets the credit for it. If nobody ever says, oh, you know what? That guy, June, June the groomer, he was talking about this before anybody ever did it, you know, or any, anybody else was talking about it. I don't care if I ever get that recognition or not. I don't need it, you know, because it's just for me. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, it's just, it's changed my life. It's made, it's made me a less stressed out person. <laughs> much happier too, I'm much happier and less judgmental, you know? And that's one thing, judging others, oh, man, it was such a tiring way to live. It was exhausting. Uh, aw awesome are the monkeys, yeah. <laughs> So on, yes, the whole dirty underwear thing echoes in my brain when I, when I get the dog. Yeah, like, oh, wow, that's amazing, so on. But yeah, it's like, but what if I was still resentful and bitter, and I was, I was preaching it and shouting it at you, and I was like, you know, you have to look at this, the dirty underwear. You have to get it out, or you're a bad person. You're a bad groomer. You know, I, I, I think I would have been met res with resistance, right? And I wouldn't have, it wouldn't have the same effect as it does when you're just doing it just to do it for yourself and you're not trying to change anybody else. Good boy, Percy. 
We're almost done demanding you. Oh my goodness. Alrighty. Good shake. that and the head is pretty good here there's not a lot matting here on the head and behind the ears is usually really bad but it's not really bad behind the ears there we go okay yeah there's some tight mats behind the ears but it's it's to be expected because again, the ears are flopping around and it's, it's you know, causing a lot of friction. So that's why they call it a high friction area, high friction zone, you know? And these are where you're gonna have the most mats. And it's also, behind the ears, it seems to be like a very sensitive spot for the dogs. So this is where you'll usually get the well, you know, the wincing, the yelping, you know, the cries of pain. <coughs> so the behind the ears is also where you wanna be the most uh, gentle. Okay. Good boy, Percy. Do you feel better? Good shake. All right, behind the ears. There we go. All righty. Right there. And the shoulders. See that? Just a network of mats. Good shake, Percy. He's getting excited because he knows that we're almost done with the dematting part. This is the toughest part of the groom. Once we get through this, the bath is easy. He'll dry in no time because all of this hair that's holding on to the moisture making it so hard to get them dry it's out of their coat. The live hairs literally push off and repel the water. So um, as I'm doing like filing the nails and I'll comb in the conditioner, and he's pretty much already air drying by that time. So I just use a hand dryer and they dry in no time. It takes maybe 10, 15 minutes to dry them. And then the haircut is easy. The haircut is actually the most enjoyable part for me. <laughs> it's the easiest and it's where I feel most creative. So, yeah, everything else after this is easy. But just like in cooking, the most important part of the day is the mise en place. You know, that's French for everything in its place. So, it, and it's the prep. It's, it's preparing all the vegetables, cutting them, cleaning them, you know, cleaning the fish, cleaning the shrimp, you know, making sure all of the ingredients are clean and ready to go. That's the most important part of the day, of a chef's day and it takes the longest, right? And then once all of that's done, the actual cooking part takes maybe seven, 12 minutes, right? And then the plating, plating the dish only takes maybe a minute or two, you know? Everything else is so easy, but it looks so beautiful and artistic because of all the work that went into the mise en place, that went into the preparation. And then you have, you have an amazing dish that could be so simple, you know? Simple, yet artistic and poetic, right? Same thing with our dog grooms. You know, we may not be putting pom-poms on him and doing anything elaborate, but just having that natural hair that's beautiful and silky, simple, yet poetic, artistic even. Look at that gnarly one. <laughs> All right. So <clears throat> now just do a final comb. Make sure I got everything. 
Good shake, Percy. Good boy. All righty. Look at that. <coughs> okay. Oh, it's a little thick there. There we go. Oh, there's some matting right there. Close to the skin I didn't get. Here, there we go, there we are, okay, okay. see all these little pin mats? There we go, it combs right out. Now that we have it all broken up, see that? Percy. Let me get that one leg, buddy. This is the last leg. There you go. There we are. There you go. I know. I know, buddy. So, especially because this is his last leg, <laughs> um, and I don't know why it is, but even when you're doing a dog's nails, it's usually that last foot. You know, they just get excited, like, all right, all right, we're done, we're done, we're done. <laughs> you know? But we're on the last leg and he knows it and so he's like starting to get a little a little anxious you know a little bit more excited because right. he actually likes the bath he did not before he tried to jump out constantly <laughs> now he's like hmm this is all right I like it uh, now that he knows why I'm watching uh, spraying water on him really but yeah even even this uh you know, now he's like, oh, we're, we're done. You don't have to do that one last leg. We're done. We're good. <laughs> there we go. You're okay. You're okay. There you go. Probably because it's feeling really tight. Remember I said uh, around the joints? Like right here, his elbow, you know? Kind of seems like that's what's triggering it. Right here around the elbow. See these? See that? All right here around the elbow. I'm sorry, Percy. I'm sorry about that. There we go. So that was what was causing all that. <coughs> all righty. So, <coughs> we started off with a dog that had these kinds of mats all over his body, all right? How long has it been? 134 minutes, so about two hours and 15 minutes we spent to get this comb to be able to glide through the coat like this. I'm still catching on a few mats on this side here. Oh, right there. But, you know, that's what it took. It took two hours of just persistence, patience, and then now we can get this comb. 
except for this one spot here. Oh, and then we got it. Good boy, Percy. Oh, there we go. There we go. Wow, I missed that. See that? Okay. So now, there we go. Now the comb can go through and all the mats are gone. See from there too. I see one here, look at that. <laughs> there we go, now the front legs are done. All right, the neck is done. Good boy, it feels, it feels silky to the touch. It feels silkier. Not so rough and fuzzy, you know? All right, there we go. So now I'm gonna do his clothes shaving, meaning um, shave the bottoms of his pad, foot, you know, bottoms of his feet, his feet pad. So I'll shave the, his feet pad, cleaning up, you know, shave around the butthole, uh, around there. They call it a sanitary area. So I'll do the sanitary shave. And the reason why I do that before the bath is because um, anytime I get my hair, you know, clipped, and when I used to keep my hair short, anytime they would shave like the neck or the sides, it always used to feel itchy and irritable. And I can only imagine it's much worse for a dog. So um, I like to do any of the clothes shaving before the bath. That way, if it does irritate his skin and make him feel itchy or whatever, then at least the bath can help cool it down. There we go. Oh wow, there we go. Alrighty. Look at all that. <laughs> so, let's see if there's any comments that I missed. Oh. Did you guess, okay, well I'll try, okay. Uh, okay, so Laura says, this monkey was so convincing because of his attitude, <laughs> his self-esteem, his conviction, that was, that was right, love, <laughs> I'm a weird monkey, <laughs> don't forget the weird part, uh, soul one, law of attraction all the way, healthier for everyone approaching anything with love and, yes, yeah, I co completely agree, um, you didn't spray, no, did you spray detangler product on the body before you started demanding? I think I may have forgotten on the actual body part, but again, the body is much easier to do than the legs and the shoulders. Um, let's see here, nice grooming stance, lol. Sometimes I catch myself doing back bends and slay, <laughs> exactly, right? It's like doing yoga for like four hours. <laughs> no wonder I'm tired. Anything can happen when you're in the zone, exactly. Do you like doing um, in-home grooming better than having a shop? Yes, I do. Um, it seems daunting having a setup and clean using other people's tiles, etc. Yeah, but you know, again, for me, I like it. I like having to be creative and that every situation is a little unique and different. Um, how much are you charging, if you don't mind me asking? I think today we're charging $100 for the haircut um, service. And again, I'm charging for my service, not the time that it takes, because my time is priceless. Your time is priceless. And that's why... <laughs> I, I hope it doesn't sound like trivial when I say thank you so much for your time because I couldn't ask for anything more precious that you have other than your time and attention. Um, happy mom, Georgina, June used Bark Logic Conditioning. Oh, oh, happy mom, that's my wife. Thank you, honey. <laughs> Georgina, thank you. Happy mom, you're welcome. So happy mom is my, my wife. Thank you so much, honey. Um, I'd be lost without my wife. Daisy like the flower. Hey June, I'm back. Oh, but I gotta go. See ya, peace out. Daisy like the flower. <laughs> I just kidding. <laughs> all right, so caught up on all the comments. Now I'm gonna do close shaving. Let me go ahead and get my clippers. All right, stay on the table, Percy. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna have to move this a little bit. Alrighty, so, 
So I'm gonna have to make some people envious here with my super amazing clippers. Uh, these here, the wall U-Clip Deluxe. Um, not everybody can use nice tools like I do. <laughs> 36 bucks, baby, on Amazon. <laughs> Alrighty. So, uh, for the feet, I'm gonna put it on the closer setting. See that? You can adjust it. So I can make it longer or I can make it shorter. I'm gonna do the shortest setting for the feet, for the foot pads. And I'm just skimming. I don't, I don't want to get all the hair, especially the hair in between the pads. I want to leave that for protection for when he's walking around or running around outside. You know, I want these hairs to be there to provide some protection so it's not so open to everything and he doesn't get stuff, you know, that irritated in there. Because I feel like the hair is there for a reason, you know. God made this perfect, amazing animal, you know, this this being, who are we to say, oh no, you know, I know you put that there, but I'm taking it out, you know? <laughs> so, see that, just very quickly, easily, just skimming. I'm not even really touching the, the pads, just trying to skim lightly. Thank you, Percy. He's actually such a sweetie. He gives me kisses and stuff. <laughs> so I'm glad we fit, we're filming this. If his mom you know, doesn't believe me, I'll say, hey, I got it on film. He, he's actually a sweetheart. <laughs> Do you shave between the paw pads when they're matted? Yes. When they're matted and it's brown, you know, it's like, like, like this big brown plug of hair in between the, the foot pads, then I will shave it out because it's already compromised. That skin is already compromised. It's already irritating them. So then I'll shave it out. I'll, it, like, let's say it was all brown and matted in between there. I would, I would go there and get it all out. And then I would put some medicated shampoo or some ointment. If you don't have any kind of antibacterial, antifungal um, skin ointment or shampoo to use, if you have a good ear cleaner, um, you could use ear cleaner and use and put it there. If you don't have, you know, something for the skin, use the dog's ear cleaner. Here's why. The ear cleaner is made to um, kill bacteria and fungus in the ears. You know how the ears get all yeasty and nasty? And yeast is fungus, you know, and it makes that smell. So the ear cleaner is designed to kill bacteria and fungus. And so Bannix works great too. Yes, exactly. Thank you, honey. <laughs> so if you don't have Bannix, if you don't have, you know, Zymox for the skin or you know, if you don't have these other, or Derm Magic, you know, they make a good skin ointment. If you don't have those products on hand, then use the ear cleaner. And here's why. There's a company called Relic, and I, I spoke with the owner of Relic. He's actually a scientist, a chemist, um, who made that product. So he was telling me that um, they have a skin, a skin solution and they have an ear solution. And I said, what's the difference? And he said, Actually, there's not much difference at all. They both have the same ingredients and they're both made the same way. It's just that the skin ointment is stronger because it's made for the skin. The ear ointment is made for the ear, which is more sensitive and the skin is more, um, you know, more fragile. So the ear cleaner is like a diluted version of the skin ointment. So. He's saying that you can use the ear cleaner on the dog's skin, but you can't use the skin cleaner or the skin ointment on the dog's ears. You see what I'm saying? Because the ear product is a more diluted, more mild form of the skin solution. So you can use the ear solution on the dog's skin, but you can't use the skin solution on the dog's ears. So that's why I'm saying that if, you, if you're in a bind and you don't have a good natural, you know, a good antibacterial, antifungal product on hand, but you can see that this dog is definitely, you know, got a, a yucky spot, a brown spot that's probably bacteria or fungus, like on the legs or the feet or something like that. Maybe right here, there's a nasty spot. Use the ear cleaner, you know, because that's mild enough 
and gentle enough to use on the ears so it's going to be safe on the skin and it's designed to kill bacteria and fungus so that's one thing is if you don't have those products on hand i do recommend using banix i love banix um but and every every horse owner every equestrian seems to know about banix it's just dog owners you know it's, it's kind of new for for dogs but anybody that has a horse you know, because <clears throat> it's for rain rot, for, you know, horse flies, you know, any, anything that can happen to the skin, uh, Banix, it can help. So, it even helps with ear infections. So, I like Banix, but what I'm saying is, you know, if you just ordered it, you don't even have, you don't have anything to use, use ear cleaner. Okay, uh, the one that makes sense, of course. I said it, of course it may. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. People are like, oh man. I joke around like that. Um, but I guess now it, it's got a point where it might not be funny. People might think I'm serious. Uh, Laura, is Banix available in Europe? Yes. Aries, hey, what's up, Aries? Alrighty, so um, I guess now I'm just gonna put them in the tub and, and wash them. I already got the, the close shaving done. See his uh, sanitary area? Check this out. So now that's all nice and clean and shaved. And his, uh, his uh, poop shoot, I guess. <laughs> See that, it's, it's clean. And I got all his pads shaved. See that? So now he is ready for the bath because we got them all combed out. See that? Whoa, isn't that a miracle? No, it's not a miracle. It's two hours worth <laughs> Anyways. Um, maybe what I'll do is after I wash and dry him, um, I'll stream the haircut live. So you can see, um, you know, what, what comb attachments, what size and things like that. Oh, ears. Thank you, honey. My wife just texted me. <clears throat> I did look at the ears, but I didn't address it on the video here. But see the ears? Ears look good. Oh, actually, okay. So I just kind of glanced at them. They looked all right. Look at this. So there's hair inside those ears, right? So, where are, where's my, uh, there we go. <clears throat> so we got ear powder, right? That's Healthy Ears by Paul Brothers Ear Powder. So here's what we're gonna do. Oh, it's a good idea to use finger cuts when you're doing this. First of all, it helps grip the hairs easier. Also, you know, because the ear is dealing with a lot of bacteria and stuff like that, we don't want to introduce any more new bacteria, right? Look at him, he's like, oh shoot, I'm out of here. Don't jump, buddy. So, we got that, right? So, put a little bit of powder in there. Less is more, you don't want to dump the powder in there. And that way, because it's easier to grip, especially with the rubber tip, the finger cuts see there's not a lot of pain or you know because it's just coming right out first of all the powder helps it grip easier and the finger cuts help it grip the ear easier so there's not a lot of pooling there's not a lot of you know tugging it doesn't it doesn't slip you know you just grip it and pulls right out so that's why you don't see him acting you know painfully reacting there we go See, so um, let me turn this camera so you can see. So look at this ear now. You can see right down into the ear canal, right? Now look at the ear. This ear, look at that. It's blocked, see that? There's enough hair in there blocking that airflow inside the ears. So that's what we pulled out on the other side. See, now you see this, right? See that little plug of hair right there? Now on this side, look at that. Look at how clean that is. It's clear. So that's what we're doing. <clears throat> now let me show you something interesting. See, we see we see a little bit of hair there, right? We see a little hair there. Not a lot, but you see a little. Now when I when I put the powder in there. All of a sudden, it just is. You see hairs in there that was that you you know you didn't see before, and it's almost like when you watch one of those like bank heist movies, <laughs> yeah. 
and they blow smoke, you know, towards the entrance. You know, you, all of a sudden you see all these like laser lines, you know, <laughs> that appear because this, you blow the smoke. Same thing with the ear powder. Look at this. Once you get the powder in there, and you can, the powder kind of coats the hairs. Look at that. All of a sudden, it seems like there's so much more hair that wasn't there before, right? Just because we put the powder in there. Isn't that interesting? So, <laughs> I thought it was pretty interesting. So, there we go. Now you can change gloves. I like to just spray some of this scent, it's cool care. And it's a coolant disinfectant. You know, I like to just uh, <laughs> spray the disinfectant on there. You know, let it dry. Give it, give it some time to kill the bacteria. Let it dry a little bit. <sighs> you know, blow on it. Then, because I don't, I mean, for me, it's just extra time. <laughs> but take you off, what do I? All right, here we go. But it probably would be best, you know, good practice to just change the finger cuts. Look at that. See how easily it comes out? Look at that. Look at that huge plug of hair that just came out. Can you believe that just came out of his ear? Out of the, out of the canal? <clears throat> so now if we look at this, there's still some right there. go see now the ear is all clear and now air can flow Alrighty, that's so satisfying <laughs> yeah right um, all right so I hope I didn't miss much guy all right so you didn't miss no you didn't you just missed the most inspiring education <laughs> you took my joke sky <laughs> Rachel oh man June's dead <laughs> do you have a favorite breed um, I, I really don't. Uh, okay, I'll be honest. My favorite breed is um, the Blue Pit. <laughs> and Dexter, my dog Dexter is a Blue Pit mix. And I don't know, he just has a piece of my heart. You know, I, I love pit bulls. I think they're just beautiful. I think they're incredibly designed. And I think that they're misunderstood. And I think maybe that's why I feel like a connection with them. Um, because, you know, all my life I felt misunderstood, you know? And so, you know, I, I don't know, I, I have a, I have a soft spot for pit bulls, especially the ones that are misunderstood. Uh, but anyways, thank you so much for joining me. Um, yeah, get these finger cuts off. Anyways, uh, just one last quick joke. My mom, my mom picks these up off the table, right? And she goes, "What is this?" And I was like, "Oh, they're they're finger in their finger gloves. You know, I put them on my fingertips so it helps me grip the hairs better when I'm grooming dogs." And she goes, "Oh." She puts it down and walks away. I was like, you, mom, I was like, you, th you thought this was, <laughs> I was just started cracking up. <laughs> Finger causes, exactly. I was like, first of all, mom, don't be so stereotypical. I know I'm Asian, but come on. <laughs> you know? And if, if I did have this many, if I had this, would I just leave it laying around like that? I was like, come on, mom. <laughs> oh man. So me laugh my ass off. I was hoping someone would say something. <laughs> Right? Perfect size for an Asian, I guess. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's not the size of the boat, baby. It's the motion of the ocean. No, I'm, saying, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, happy mama's <laughs> uh, Honey, tell them. Tell them. Tell them this is too small for me. Back me up. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> like it matters. Like it matters. I'll see you guys.